Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to a new True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Today, I'll be discussing the unsolved murder of Harriet Riley. As I was researching for this case, I found some very heartbreaking information, but found some confusing information as well. Here we go. Harriet Riley was born on February 26, 1968 in Florida. She was the third child of Mammy and Harold Riley. Harriet's father, Harold, was actually in the U.S. Air Force. He did a tour in Thailand in the early 70s, and the family moved to Sacramento, California in 1971 after Harold was discharged from the military. On September 27th, 1971, the family would go through a traumatic and heartbreaking tragedy. Harold, who was 31 years old at the time, was tragically shot and killed in his own house as someone shot through the kitchen window, leaving Mammy to raise the three children on her own, and his case unfortunately remains unsolved. After Harold's death, the family moved out of the neighborhood to another neighborhood in Sacramento, which is called North Highlands. On January 9th, 1975, six-year-old Harriet Riley went alone to what I believe is called Larchmont Park. This park was known to be a popular place among kids. There were no um, parental supervision, and it was just a great place for kids to play together. Harriet left her home at 3.45 p.m. and was expected back home at 5.15 p.m. The little girl was last seen by a witness who saw Harriet playing alone on the sidewalk next to the park at 5 p.m. Harriet's mother noticed that Harriet did not show up on time, and by 6 p.m., Harriet's mom, Mammy, called the cops. The, there was this fear in the area of a serial child predator since an 11-year-old named Stephanie Black disappeared and was found dead a few months before Harriet's disappearance. Police searched all night and into the next morning. B neighbors even began searching for the six-year-old. At 9.30 a.m. that morning, a woman who was cleaning opened a dumpster near the Terry Crest apartment complex and found Harriet. Unfortunately, the little girl was found dead, wrapped with a plastic sheet and plastic bag over her head. It was revealed that Harriet was killed by suffocation, turning it into a homicide investigation. Of course, her mother Mammy was absolutely devastated. She was emotionally and physically broken after receiving this news. Like years before, her own husband was killed and now she has to mourn the loss of her baby who was also murdered. The community was devastated by Harriet's death as well. Sheriff Dwayne Lowe stated that Harriet's death was some tragic accident. According to him, two six-year-old boys were playing with Harriet at the park then ended up at uh, one of the boys' house. Later on, the boys said that they played some game and supposedly tied Harriet's ankles and covered her face with plastic wrapping material. And pretty much in my personal opinion, I just really want to know who these boys even were and what kind of, what kind of game would they be playing which would involve wrapping another child with plastic. It's just really confusing to me. Sheriff Lowe stated that there were holes in the story and had the same question that I have. Who was responsible for moving Harriet's body in the dumpster? Like again, in my opinion, I just don't see two six-year-old boys having the strength to move Harriet or any other human body into a dumpster. It's like the boys were unable to explain what happened after this supposed game ended and you know according to the story they left Harriet for dead. The families of these boys did receive legal counsel and they refused to cooperate with investigators. On January 17th 1975 the boys were placed in state custody. County probation department filed petitions against the parents for neglect and unfit homes but the charges were dropped on April 12, 1975. The parents didn't believe that the boys were responsible for Harriet's death 
at all and they sued Sheriff Lowe, but there's no information on the outcome of this lawsuit. Community activists don't even buy Sheriff Lowe's story or theory that the boys were the ones who accidentally killed Harriet that day. I don't know what happened. And again, this case took place like 20 years before I was even born. But I do pray that Harriet would receive justice. Even if the boys did play this game and ended up accidentally killing Harriet, I just can't see how they'd even have the strength to place her in a dumpster. Someone had to have placed her in a dumpster if there was something sketchy about Harry's death. Otherwise, the police or some ambulance would have or should have been called. I'm not sure if Harriet's mother, Mammy, is still alive or not, but if she is, then I'm sure she hasn't stopped thinking about her or her late husband either. They were both tragically taken away from her without any explanation and without any justice. I just pray that the truth would come out. The God that I serve, the God of the Bible, is the God of justice and he will make sure that justice is served. I thank you guys for taking the time in your day to watch this video. If you guys did like this video, please hit the like button. If you guys have any thoughts on this case, please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section. If you guys have any true crime cases for me to cover, please feel free to let me know. Please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and click the bell to be notified about the next video. I'll see y'all next time for True Crime Tuesdays. I'll talk to y'all later.